it's less than one month until Iron Man Australia. So what do you need to know? Watch on to find out. Hey, how's it going? I'm Will from Iron Will Multisport Australia, your place to find tips, tricks and experience in triathlon, multisport and endurance events and training. Last year, I set myself the goal of completing the full Ironman at Ironman Australia after watching my friend complete it last year. To start off with, I got myself a pool membership, started swimming regularly, uh, started cycling a lot more all over the place, increased my running mileage. Then in about July or so, I got myself a coach and he started putting together a proper training plan for me to lead me up to my A race, which is the full Ironman Australia on May the 5th. Amongst some illnesses and injuries, I've managed to get myself to a decent fitness and assuming that my current injury gets uh, better by the time the race comes around, I'm looking at about sub 11 hours. So what are the main things you need to know before going to the Ironman Australia event? One of the awesome things to know is that the event is going to be live streamed. So there'll be the Facebook live stream by the official uh, Ironman live stream. This is one of 17 events held throughout 2019 which will have this live stream service. So if you have friends or family or whoever else that may want to watch and see how you're going, they can follow along with a live stream on Facebook and also follow along on the Ironman Oceania, Oceania app which is downloadable from the App Store or Play Store and follow your specific times. If you haven't signed up yet, then you better get in quick. The full Ironman Australia, there's, uh, they sent out an email, I think it was last week, saying that there was less than 100 spots available left. So there is less than 100 spots available for the full Ironman. The 70.3, so the half Ironman event, is completely sold out. There is also the Iron Kids event, which is, uh, you can sign up on the day, so there's still plenty of places available for the kids. And there's also the Bright Night Run, which takes place on the Friday night. This allows you to just get out, have a bit of fun, relax before the event. Another thing to note is that in line with Ironman Australia trying to be more sustainable, they're not going to be handing out the disposable plastic bags for these special needs bags. So these are the bags that you take with the disposable or perishable, well, perishable food items for the bike and the run. So if you would like uh, items to be brought with you on the bike and the run. Um, these are not your check-in bags, these are the actual special needs bags. If you would like to have those, you'll need to purchase reusable ones. They're about $4 each or $7.50 for two. Or, if you want to, you can bring your own special needs bags. They need to fit the appropriate size, so it needs to be 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. If you believe you will be using the on-course nutrition, then now is a great time to get a start on how your body reacts to that supplied on-course nutrition. The gels and energy bars are going to be the Iron Man branded energy bars and gels. So see if you can pick up some of those. And the uh, electrolyte supplied on course is going to be the pure hydration or pure electrolyte hydration brand. So if you can find some of that, give that a try as well. Make sure that it sits well with your body. As usual, the standard Iron Man rules on course will apply. So I'm going to go through a couple of the sort of more major rules. Uh, that everyone kind of needs to know. But for the full list of rules, go to the Ironman website. I will leave a link to that in the description box below. So in all likelihood, this is going to be a wetsuit swim. So wetsuits will be optional. So make sure that if you want to have a wetsuit, make sure you bring that wetsuit with you. While on course, you can't use any technology that may be potentially distracting. So if you are caught with this sort of technology, you will be given a penalty. Of course, this means you can use your standard wrist monitors, that sort of thing for heart rate and just to generally track your progress. But other than that, you cannot use your mobile phone. So you can't make any calls on course. You can't use music, so you can't listen to music and you can't be blasting music out to other people. That is distracting and you cannot use any recording devices during the course. So unfortunately for myself, I'm not going to be having any footage from me while doing the full Ironman. If your technology is brought with you, that's, you know, that's not illegal. That's fine to have with you. You just can't use it. So for example, my helmet has bone conduction headphones built in, but as long as I'm not listening to music on it, I will be okay. Another pretty standard rule for triathlon is, especially in Transition 1 and Transition 2, to make sure that your order of operations is correct. 
So before you take your bike off the rack, you need to have your helmet strapped up. Anytime you are moving with your bike, you need to have your helmet strapped up. This includes when you're coming back for T2. Make sure that you rack your bike first, then unclip your helmet. You do not want to get a penalty, that is not fun. This event, as per usual, is a non-drafting event. So you do need to keep 12 meters behind the person in front of you. And if someone passes you, then you need to drop back 12 meters behind them before you can potentially overtake them. If you are overtaking, you can take up to 25 seconds, I believe it is, to do that overtake. If you don't overtake within that 25 seconds, you may have a penalty applied to you. And especially for those people coming from overseas, in Australia we keep left unless overtaking. So on the bike course, you will always overtake on the right, you can never overtake on the left. If you do overtake on the left, you may be given a penalty. Another rule is you cannot do any sort of public toilet. If you're caught doing a public toilet stop, then you will be given a penalty. Also, please don't go to the toilet while you're on the bike. When I was doing the Ironman 70.3 West in Sydney, I was passing someone and I saw a lot of fluid coming down their leg. I'm so glad I wasn't behind them because I would not want to be anywhere behind that. But yeah, please don't go to the toilet on the bike. There are toilets at each of the aid stations. Check in for the full Ironman Australia can happen anywhere between the 2nd of May and the May the 4th, so Saturday the 4th of May. This of course is International Star Wars Day, may the 4th be with you. So a good idea is to get there a little early and make a little mini holiday out of it, like I am. I'm going to be heading down there on the Wednesday, the 1st of May, and just spending those few days relaxing and acclimatizing to that area. Check-in happens at the Glass House, which is just a couple of hundred meters down the road from the start area towards the town, so away from the water. And you will need photographic ID to check in, so make sure you have your driver's license or maybe a passport, something like that. Also in the few days before the event, so on the Friday and the Saturday morning, there is a practice swim. So you can swim in the course that you're going to be swimming in on the day. And I think this is a great opportunity, especially for myself, to get my wetsuit wet before the race. I haven't used my wetsuit that much recently, so this is a great chance to get it out, get it on me, make sure it's all still okay before race day. On the Saturday, it will be mandatory to check in your race bags. So these are the bags you'll need for transition one and transition two. These are the bags that you'll put in your, like, your shoes. So your cycling shoes, your running shoes, whatever socks, whatever nutrition you want to take with you on course, hats, uh, sunglasses, that sort of thing. Also in your run bag, so your T2 bag, you'll need to take your race number, bib, thing. That's only mandatory on the running course, so make sure that it is in your running bag. On race day, you will not be able to access these bags. So make sure that these are packed correctly on the Saturday prior to checking them in. On the Saturday, there is also transition tours available. So there's times available on the website. I'll leave a link in the description box below. These can be great to make sure that you can figure out exactly where to go on the day in the transition area. So when you come out of the swim, you know exactly where to go. You don't have any sort of hesitation. And when you're coming off the bike, you know exactly where to go and exactly where to exit to go onto the run. On the day, transition will be open from 4.30 a.m. So this is your time to check in your bike. And also they will be doing, of course, the mandatory helmet check. So before you go into the transition zone, you need to have your helmet done up, low and tight, and they will check to make sure that it is done up correctly and tight enough before they allow you into the transition zone. On race day, you will also need the tattoos. So the race number and the race uh, category tattoo. So the race number goes on your right bicep, and if you do have a long sleeve triathlon suit, then this will go on your right forearm. Your category number does need to go on your left calf muscle. Make sure that you have checked out the course before you attend the race day. So the course information can be found on the Ironman Australia website. I'll leave a link again to that below. The cutoff times, so for the swim, your cutoff time will be 2 hours and 20 minutes. For the run, oh, sorry, for the bike, it'll be 10 hours after your start time. And then finally the run, your cutoff time is 17 hours after your start time. At the end of the race, there is the recovery area and the aid stations, that sort of thing. So make sure 
that once you finish the race, you get everything you need. There's ice cream, there's food, there's massage, there's people to look after you if you need first aid. Also, make sure that before you leave the recovery area, and before you head out to meet friends and family, that you have picked up your medal, your towel, and your finisher's shirt because you cannot go back into the finishing recovery area after you've left it. There's a no re-entry policy. The swim start will be from the Westport Park boat ramp. So on the day, this will be pretty obvious where it is because you'll see everyone starting from there. But do pay attention to your wave starting time. Make sure that you start at the correct time. Also in the swim, you'll be given a swim cap with a particular color, make sure that you wear your correct swim cap. Mine this year is pearly pink. Also, as I mentioned before, this will most likely be a wetsuit swim. It's wetsuit swim if the temperature, I think it's below 24.5 degrees. And typically for this race, the temperature of the water is below 24.5 degrees. So wetsuits are usually optional. The temperature will be determined on race morning and that's will make the, they will make the determination as to whether or not it is a wetsuit swim. So the swim itself is one lap. You go down the river and then back. It's nice and easy. Just make sure you follow the boys. They will be on your left hand side. So if you can also start practicing your breathing on your left hand side so you can make sure that you can see the boys. The bike is a two lap course. So it starts at Port Macquarie, goes all the way down to Lauriton and back, and then back down to Lauriton and back. This makes it the full 180 kilometers. Along the bike, there are five aid stations. So you'll pass that on the way there and then on the way again. This makes it a total of 10 aid stations that you will pass. Each of these bike aid stations will follow the same format. So that'll be discard, toilet, water, electrolyte, food, and I do mean toilet and then water, not toilet water. Then the reverse, so electrolyte, water, toilet, and then discard. And of course at these aid stations, it's completely up to you as to whether or not you take anything. Personally, I'm gonna try and have as much with me on the course as possible and use my own nutrition. So mostly at the aid stations, I'll just be picking up and dropping off water bottles to fill up my own water bottle on my bike I'll be using my own electrolyte tablets, my own gels, my own energy bars that I will bring with me. Next up is the run and the run is a four lap course. So you'll be doing the same run four times. This means that at the end of each of those laps, you will get a run band. And in order to finish, you need to have all of the colored bands required for that course. If you've missed one, you won't be allowed down the exit chute. During the run, there are four aid stations. And at some of these aid stations, you'll be able to visit them twice. And I think at one of them, you can actually visit it three times. So you'll, you have a total of, I think it's 25 aid stations across the course. At these aid stations, you'll have your usual water, electrolytes, energy drink, maybe some gels, energy bars. There will also be a toilet at each of the aid stations, as far as I know. They'll also have a whole bunch of extra supplies, such as anti-chafe cream, uh, sunscreen, that sort of stuff. If you don't want to be bringing that stuff with you on course and you need to top up. Personally, I'm going to try and use as much as my own stuff during the run, but by that point, I'm going to start running out, so I will be using some of the on-course nutrition and possibly even topping up with some of the on-course sunscreen, anti-chafe cream if I need it. And definitely I will be using the on-course water electrolytes and energy drinks. They also quite often have flat Coca-Cola. I will pick up the cup and as I've mentioned this in previous videos, I squeeze the top so that it closes the entry a little bit and has a little sort of opening. And I'll use that to sip from to make sure that it doesn't splash all over my face and that I don't lose the whole cup's worth of liquid before I can even get it to my face. If you're still on the course after 5.30 p.m., which a massive amount of people will be, you will need to run with glow sticks. This is so that you're more visible because that's about the time when the sun starts setting. If you don't run with the glow sticks, you will have a penalty applied or be disqualified, so make sure that you run with them. And of course, these will be supplied. Accommodation is filling up quick, so make sure you get your accommodation booked if you're planning to attend at all throughout the event. I am going to be staying at a backpackers, uh, it's somewhere near the start line, with a bunch of other people from my triathlon club, the UTS Balance Triathlon Club. It'll be 
apparently the whole place is going to be filled with triathletes. So it'll be the most sedated backpackers I have ever been to on the night before the race. Everyone will be getting a nice and early night. And if you are planning to attend the event, make sure that you take account of the road closures. There will be plenty of road closures happening for this event. Of course, the bike will uh, have road closures, the run will have road closures. So make sure that you check this out. Again, I'll leave a link in the description box below to the Ironman Australia website where they detail these road closures. And now, especially if you are planning on competing in the Ironman Australia, then try and book your accommodation until the Tuesday at the very least, because the presentations, the roll down and the after party happens on the Monday. Of course, people will be finishing all through the night on the Sunday up until, well, 17 hours after their start time. So all the post event stuff happens on the Monday afternoon. This is of course where you can find out whether or not you have made it to the Ironman World Championships and also to just have a great party with the rest of the triathletes. Let your hair down, have a bit of fun, have a couple of drinks and enjoy yourself. Relax, you've deserved this. And during the race, make sure you give a massive smile to all the volunteers. They are giving up their time to make this race awesome and to help you out as much as they can. So give them a massive smile, give them a thank you as you pass them. Are you planning on doing the Ironman Australia or any other Ironman events this year? Let us know in the comments section down below. Check out the video of the Ironman 70.3 Western Sydney. I'll leave a link up here. If you want triathlon content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.